Hello and welcome to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information to help you understand and manage the technology in your home. If this isn't your first time here, welcome back. Today, I wanna to talk about my obsession with Rocketbook. Um, I own just about every single version of Rocketbook there is, so I'm gonna give you a full review on all of them. I've paid for all of these notebooks myself, so just so you know, I am obsessed and I'm really excited to dig in because there's a lot of things I like and dislike about each version, which is why I own a plethora of different ones. So let's get right into it. So now when I say I own like all of the rocket books, I'm not kidding, I own all of the rocket books. And as I mentioned, there are things that I like and dislike about all of them. First, let's talk about what Rocketbook actually is. So a Rocketbook is basically a notepad, but the cool things about this notepad is first, it's reusable. You can write on the Rocketbook really easily, right? So there's what I just wrote. And then you can either erase it just by doing this, or you can squirt some water and wipe it off. So those are two ways to erase what you've written on the Rocketbook. Now, in order to save what you've got on the Rocketbook, you use the Rocketbook app. In order to digitize a Rocketbook page, first open the Rocketbook app and then tap on the camera button. Hover over the screen and it will save it. You can hit next and choose any of the predefined destinations that you want the image to go to. You can title the scan and hit done. Now it is saved. And you can go back through any of your notes from previous scans right here in the app, or you can look them up wherever you have saved them to. If you wanna make sure your text is searchable, make sure you go to the settings and tap on handwriting recognition. Turn on the handwriting recognition. So now, if you wanna search for any of the notes that you have, it's gonna pull up right hand, right. The bottom of the rocket book has these icons. If you mark off one of the icons or fill it in anything like that, it will automatically go to the destination associated with that icon. So that's the main thing that I really love about Rocketbook is first that it's reusable. I'm not going through a ton of different paper and the fact that I can easily digitize my notes. And that's really the most important part for me is the ability to look through those notes at any time. If I want to find something that I had written down prior or anything like that, I always have it saved digitally. This also helps me if I'm out and about and I'm like, oh, what was that thing I wrote down? I don't have to have the physical notebook in order to go back and look at what I have digitized through the Rocketbook app. So now that we know what Rocketbook is, let's talk about the different types and styles that you can get for Rocketbook. First, there are three main sizes. There's the mini, which is just a little teeny tiny notebook. I like to put this in my purse or something so I can take some notes when I'm out and about and it's um, you know really convenient and easy. Then we have the, the next size up is the executive. So we've got mini, we have executive, and then letter. So letter is just gonna be standard letter size, um, you know, like eight and a half by 11 size notebook. My favorite is this executive size. It's, you know, really convenient. It's not too small, but it's not too big. It's just kind of that Goldilocks size right in between, perfect size for me. This is the executive. So let's go through some of the different types of Rocketbook that you can get. The first one I'm gonna talk about is actually the kids version. So this is actually um, just a 
you know, white erase coloring book. It's just got blank pages. Again, it has these icons at the bottom that help you direct exactly where you want the scan to go. Uh, but it's really thick pages, uh, very different from the other types of rocket book. And it does have some lined pages so that you can start uh, teaching how to write the alphabet or how to write words or things like that. It also has this dot, um, the dotted page and the rest of the pages are just that um, plain white background. So that is this uh, coloring book. So the rocket book color. And then as kids grow up, they may want to use this academic planner. And what I really like about the academic planner, obviously pretty school oriented. First, it has this fun ruler right here built into the cover. And then you've got this mission control. So goals I'm focusing on, what's up next, what I'm excited about, and a basic task list. Then you can add your class schedule. So you can say what class it is, the day, the time, and the teacher contact and any notes about those different classes. And then you have this project tracker. So you can put the project, different milestones, different due dates, and any notes you have about those projects. You do have this full year. So if there's something that's like pushed out in advance, you can stick that on your year calendar. And then you have these monthly page views. And in the month, you can add any goals you want and any notes for that month. Next, you have this weekly view. So you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. important items, assignments, and any activities that you have. And then you have some smaller windows for Saturday and Sunday. Finally, you have this mind map and this priority matrix. So you can prioritize any of your tasks and any of your goals. And then it has this reflection information. So you can say, how was your day? What did you learn about yourself? What are you grateful for? Um, and any other reflective um, journaling type things you want to add. The rest of this just has lined pages and the dotted pages. So you can use either of those for any other notes or drawings or anything else you need to take note of. And then it also has some just plain blank pages. And since we've got inches over here, the back of the book has centimeters. So you've got two different rulers that you can measure things with just with your notebook. Similar to the academic planner, we have the panda planner. So this is just the same thing, but in the letter size and the executive size. So since the executive size is a little easier to go through, let's go through this one. The Panda Planner has a lot of really cool templated pages, similar to just a regular Panda Planner. Now the Panda Planner has a lot more of the planning area. So you can see we've got a whole annual planning here. So any important dates you can note right here. And then you have several monthly plannings. So if you set a daily habit here, you're going to be able to check off that habit every day in this little habit square. You can also put some tasks over here and some notes down here. And there's a few of those monthly pages. Where Panda Planner is really going to shine though is in these goal setting pages. So it's gonna have you brainstorm your goals and then have you whittle it down to just a few and then have you create a roadmap and any obstacles that you might end up facing for meeting those goals. And then it wants you to set some if then routines, which is really going to help you if I am given a plate of cookies, what am I going to do about that plate of cookies if I'm trying to lose weight or something like that. And then help with motivation for your goals and then a commitment to yourself where you're actually going to sign off on it um, and you know make that commitment to yourself to accomplish these goals. I love the weekly spreads here for Panda Planner. It's got progress on goals, big wins from last week, help you celebrate that, um, what I learned and how I'll improve, things I will do to make this week great in my professional life, in my work life, I'm sorry, in my personal life, in my work life, with my family and friends and with my relationship, um, and then any habits that I wanted to 
add for any day of the week here. So first habit, second habit, I can put the habits that are here and I can mark them off as done in each square here. And then goals for this week and any projects or tasks. I really like this weekly spread here. Then we go into this daily spread where I can check off if I've meditated, what I'm grateful for in the morning, what I'm excited about for the day, my daily affirmation, what I'm going to be focusing on, what I did for exercise, and then some priorities over here. And then for the evening routine, today's wins and how I'll improve. And then we've got my tasks and my schedule here. So you'll be able to see I took a lot of what is in here when I created my own template and we'll go into that um, in just a minute. Once you get through the daily pages, there's some dotted pages, um, but not a ton because the main focus of the Panda Planner is going to be on the goal setting, on the weekly planning, and on the daily planning. So kind of a step below the Panda Planner. It's not going to have as detailed of information um, to kind of guide you through that planning um, is this Rocketbook Fusion Plus. This is a newer planner um, or a newer notebook that Rocketbook has released. And I love some of the pages in this Rocketbook Fusion. Some of the pages that are included in the Rocketbook Fusion Plus are first this monthly goals planner where you can set out your priorities and tasks and any different goals that you have for these different life areas. The next page is two pages of lists. So you can have a task list or any other type of list that you want to add to your rocket book. Next, we have these monthly pages where it has this section for focus and a section for notes. This is the weekly spread where you can set out different things for these weekly items. So you could have a morning list, an afternoon list, an evening list if you want to separate it out that way, or you can separate your day out in any number of different ways. After the weekly spread, we have these project templates. Now this can also be a goal or just a project that you're working on. You have different milestones and you can fill in your progress for that milestone with due dates tasks, ideas, and notes for each of these projects. And then here you've got meeting notes. So if you have a particular meeting that you need to attend, this can help you keep track of everything that happened in that meeting. And then you just have some standard lined pages. After the lined pages, you'll have standard dotted pages and some squared pages. And then you have a couple of just blank pages. And that is the Fusion Plus. So since that Rocketbook Fusion is a more recent notebook, um, I did have the previous version of the Rocketbook Fusion, and it does have a few differences, and it's not as detailed as the Rocketbook Fusion Plus. It has just a few of these kind of templated pages, and then the rest of the book is the dotted pages and the lined pages. So it has kind of a mixture of all of the above. Now the standard Rocketbook Fusion like I said, is a little different than the Fusion Plus. First thing, you've got this list area right here where you've got a project and a task, a due date and estimated time, and some notes. And then you have these weekly spreads. They look definitely different than the Plus one. And then you have one monthly spread here, and then some objectives that you can add goals with results and action plans and reflections. And then we've got an idea area here, and then all we've got is just these dotted pages and then some lined pages. And that is the regular Rocketbook Fusion. So finally, we have just the standard Rocketbook. All of the pages are going to be the dotted pages on just this standard size. So you can really make it whatever you wanna make it. It's just, um, it's just the standard dotted ones. Finally, we have this Rocketbook Pro. Now, I had a different idea about what this was going to be, and I'm actually really disappointed in what it turned out to be. So um, what I saw when I looked at it, I was like, oh, this is great. It's got these removable, this removable section, and you can use this hard bound case. And what I really thought it was going to be allow me to do 
is to replace all of the individual pages so that I could take an individual page and maybe rearrange it and things like that. So I can maybe like create a template and I'll talk about the templates in just a second create a template and then put it in the order I want to. So say if I mess up on a page, I'd be able to take that page out, um, put in another page and be okay with that. But the r reality is it's just got these inserts that you can replace and add, but you can't rearrange the pages inside the insert. The pages don't come out of these metal clips. That's what was really disappointing for me with this Rocketbook Pro. Um, I don't actually use this one very often because like I said, I would have liked to be able to remove pages and add pages as I needed. Now, finally, what I've done with my Rocketbook that I am so excited about. So generally, you don't want to write on a Rocketbook with a permanent pen because it's not going to erase like the friction pens that it comes with or that you can just purchase. So what I've done is I bought a Sharpie that is a ultra fine tip or a Micron 05. Even either of these permanent markers will work just fine. So what you do with the permanent markers is you can create your own templates. So what I've done here is I've created a daily template, a weekly template, some goal page templates and a, a monthly template. So you'll be able to see that I included a lot of what is in the Fusion, the Fusion Plus, and the Panda Planner in these templates that I created on my own. So you can see any of this pink is really easily wiped off. I'll show you how I do that in a minute. I've got these monthly planning, and then we have a weekly planner here. So these are actually in permanent. So I know that I'm gonna be cleaning the family room on Monday, cleaning the master bedroom on Tuesday, cleaning the office on Wednesday. So those are all permanent, but then we've got um, the stuff that I'm just doing for that day inside here. And then these are the workouts that I'm planning on doing. So these are also permanently in there. And then we've got some goals check-in, wins from last week, and different roles. So I've taken this from the Franklin system where you've got um, your weekly compass and this is my weekly compass here. So I've got my roles and goals um, here. Like, so my big rocks, if you're familiar with any of that um, Franklin Covey planning system. So that's my weekly spread. And then we've got my daily spread. So we've got my schedule for the day, any tasks I need to um, complete. I've got cleaning tasks here and then meals here that I'm planning on making. And then my focus for the day, I put a daily affirmation in here, you know, stole this from the Panda Planner, um, something I'm thankful for, a thought for the day. Um, and then these are my habits for the day that I want to make sure I get. Notes, something I learned today, an act of kindness I performed today. And then today's wins, again, I took that one from Panda Planner and whether or not I ate sweets today. So that is um, part of that. And then you can see my goals template here. I put the goal here, why I want that goal, um, dates that I'm starting and dates that um, I have targeted to end that goal, um, what, the, what accomplishing the goal will allow me to do, who I'll be accountable to, and how I will celebrate achieving that goal. And then I've got milestones here where I can keep track of how close I am to the milestones. I've got dates um, of when that milestone is due by basically. And then any actions that I need or habits I need to add to help me accomplish that goal. So these are my bullet journals. So you can see if I write anything in here and I can erase it. Or, or I can do the standard erasing and my template is going to stay, but the um, filling out of it will be gone. So there you go. So a couple of the tricks for getting these templates just right. You need to give it time to rest. So what I actually did is I would draw out the template on a page. I purchased some stencils 
from Amazon. I just looked up bullet journal stencils and purchased some of these stencils. And I used those on the pages because I'm not an artist. I can't do that very well. And once I created the page, I would leave it alone open, like wouldn't close the book or anything like that, leave it alone so it can dry. And I would give it at least a day or two um, to dry before you even move on to the next page in your templates. And then once you've gotten all of the templates created, I would leave it alone for a week or two um, just to make sure everything is dried and everything is working before you try to write with the friction pens and use your little squirt bottle and rag to wipe anything off. Um, that way the template is not going to smear or smudge. You gotta give it enough time to really dry into those pages. So that is my big tip for if you're going to create a bullet journal type um, type rocket book with permanent ink. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what rocket book can do for you. I'm so excited to share with you my love of rocket book. If you have any questions at all, reach out to me on social media. I'm at family tech on all social platforms and make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you want more of this tech content and we will see you next time.